Welcome to the American Lean Podcast, where we cover five topics in five days in about five minutes. The only place in the world where you can get daily lean coaching. Your host is Tom Reed, and he shares his 30 years of experience and covers leadership, culture, entrepreneurship, lean methodologies, industry 4.0, and interviews special guests on their lean journey. We're glad you're here. So let's go. Welcome to American Lean Team. Today's Friday, so that means we're doing some interviews with some organizations on their lean journey. I happen to be in Waterloo, Iowa at Filter Miner, a division of the Donaldson Corporation, which is a $2.7 billion a year organization with 140 locations worldwide in 44 countries. Next to me is Alan Anderson, Continuous Improvement Manager here at Filter Minder. Alan, welcome in. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Tom. It's good to be here. Tell us a little about yourself. Tell us a little about Filter Minder and we'll get going. Uh, well, Donaldson is a company that serves kind of the engine and uh, industrial filtration markets throughout the world. Um, I primarily work in the engine filtration side of things uh, with uh, air and fuel filtration. Our location, we do something different than a lot of the other locations where we focus specifically on the electronics that monitor filtration systems. So gauges, switches, sensors. Okay. Uh, essentially, we kind of tell you when to change a filter. Okay. So is it more of a technology driven business than maybe some of the others? Yes. Yes. We are definitely the technology behind a lot of this stuff. Okay. Obviously, we're talking about a lean journey. And how long have you been on your lean journey? Uh, I'd say we probably dipped our toes in the water about a year and a half ago, uh, shortly after I came on board. We kind of jumped a little bit more in uh, about six months ago. Okay. What do you hope to gain from embarking on your lean journey? Being an uh, international company as we are, uh, a small location like Waterloo can quickly get absorbed into any of the other manufacturing locations. So to keep our technology and our workforce here in Waterloo, we knew that we needed to, to do some stuff differently here in Waterloo, I guess. Okay. And so just so everybody knows, one of the first things that we did uh, that really has helped change the culture here is put in a flow line, right? So before you were building in large batches of about 50 units per order, is that true? Yes. And now we have a mixed model. One piece flow line. What's that? What has that meant to the organization? What's happened? Yeah. So some of the big savings we saw right away were um, obviously reduced, reduced with you know, our in-process inventories. We got to move our stations a lot closer together. We had some ergonomic improvements uh, as well as we kind of took a lot of the conflict out of our employee relations, uh, shop floor to shop floor individuals. With, uh, with the batch processing model, uh, we had a lot of different speeds and operators. So they were always kind of getting bunched up and you know, as they move station to station, it caused a lot of conflict. Um, now it's a lot easier for those guys to, uh, out on the shop floor to, to know what they're going to do for the day and um, kind of work together to get the, get the stuff out the door. Okay, awesome. What have been some of the biggest struggles? Yeah. Um, so like a lot of companies, we've had some, some veteran folks around here, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years uh, doing the same, same kind of work. So to come in and change the way that they're actually doing their work day to day, we had some some initial naysayers, as, as most companies would with this kind of thing. So kind of breaking through some of that, understanding some of the WIP inventories, things like that, were, were kind of hindering our ability to get product out the door and, and provide value to our customers. Long lead times, high reject rates, things like that were kind of... So what are some of the things that you've learned from those struggles? So some of the things that I've learned from the struggles, uh, being kind of a young engineer, I took a lot of the textbook and just tried to apply it right out the gate. What I needed to do was probably take a step back and understand that you know everyone's human and we have to we have to work through that change model on an individual basis often. So as a team, we can move through it. So kind of taking a step back and, and distancing ourselves from the data for a little bit and really focusing on some of the some of the concerns that people are having out on the shop floor or you know in the office environment uh, and working through those, not just to not just to get more products out at the end of the day. Yeah. So. Absolutely, because it's all about a culture. How do we change a culture? How do we turn the 50 people that are here in Waterloo the daily problem solving, right? So along with those struggles, what are some of the things that you guys have learned on your journey? Uh, yeah, so data is great, um, but if we can't address those, those initial concerns from people on the floor, uh, those ideas are really not going to be well received, mm -hmm. are never going to take off. Yep. That was kind of one of my big my big lessons learned right off the gate, I'd say. At the end of the day, they're the ones doing the work every day, right? So if we want to make improvements, that's absolutely who we need to get engaged in ideas and thoughts, correct? Yep. Yeah, we really have to treat them as the uh, as the process experts and, and get their input uh, as we try to make some of these changes because they really are the ones doing the work. Sure. Day. Absolutely. What do you think have been some of the biggest surprises that you have seen as we've been on our own journey? I think one of the things that I was really surprised by as we kind of put in this mixed model flow line uh, was how receptive some people can be and how some of the biggest naysayers could end up being our biggest cheerleaders. 
Um, once we could, once we could help them realize the benefits of some of this stuff and how the work itself could become easier, we really, we really got some of those uh, initial naysayers uh, to be our biggest cheerleaders um, as, as time went on. So, if my organization were wanting to begin a lean journey, what advice would you give us? Uh, I would, uh, I would say, get some designated resources. One of our one of our big struggles was, you know, adding these extra continuous improvement responsibilities onto people's day to day. Often people weren't super receptive to, you know, hey, here's sure. three extra meetings yep. a week or here's you know hours that you need to spend out on the shop floor. Um, so really get some designated resources, have somebody really kind of guiding you, um, bring in extra help if you need it. Have you found it useful to have a coach guiding you? Yes, absolutely. So being being young and kind of fresh out of school, I, I knew the textbook side of a lot of this stuff. But having some help with the actual application, somebody with some experiences, has really proved itself to be beneficial for us. Great. All right. Final thing. Tell us how we can find out more about your organization yeah. and how we can reach out. Um, so you can check us out at Donaldson.com. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for joining us today and sharing your story. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I'm always looking for ways to improve the content I share with you in this podcast. So I'd love to hear from you. If you have topics that you would like covered or if you would like to share your company's lean journey, please contact me at Tom at AmericanLean.com. Thank you for joining us today. As always, we are honored to serve you, and we hope that you and your company are getting a little bit better every day. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and share it with others in the lean and business community. If you'd like to turbocharge your lean efforts, please visit us at AmericanLean.com.